Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Schmidt, and today is Wednesday, April 8th. And joining me is Senator Carla Bigham and Representative Tony Jurgens. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. You bet. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. We are currently in a stay-at-home order because of COVID-19 in Minnesota. And on Tuesday, April 7th, workers' compensation for frontline responders was passed in the House and Senate. Senator Bigham, can you tell us what this entails? Yep, the bipartisan legislation protects our frontline heroes fighting the battle against COVID-19. And it makes sure that police officers, firefighters, uh, paramedics, nurses, uh, home health care workers, health care workers uh, that are in maybe long-term facility, assisted living facilities, um, are uh, able to, are protected to, um, from, uh, for workers' comp for uh, COVID if they contract it and um, become ill as a result of working, um, that they then uh, come down with symptoms and get sick with COVID, that they're protected from workers' compensation. Um, you know, as we don't want them to have any financial um, hardships as a result of doing their job and protecting us. And as the, the daughter and sister of firefighters, uh, I know they put everything they have on the line to protect us. And so we got to make sure that they're protected uh, when they're done uh, helping us. Representative Jurgens, can you speak more on what this means for our frontline responders? Yeah, I agree. With the, first of all, I want to thank those people on the front lines, the firefighters, the police officers, the daycare providers, the health professionals that are keeping us all safe. And what this does is it shows them that we have their back. And um, the, it, what the bill specifically does is it changes the burden of proof. So uh, if it, uh, one of those that we just mentioned uh, contracts the virus, rather than the burden of proof being on them that they contracted it at work, it puts the burden, it, it assumes that they contracted it at work and it puts a burden of proof on the employer or somebody else to, pr to prove that it was otherwise, that they didn't uh, get the disease at work. So uh, I'm glad that we got this passed. It was bipartisan. The Workers' Comp Advisory Council put a lot of time and effort into this. It was agreement between both business and labor um, and Democrats and Republicans. So I was glad that we could get this done for those on the front lines that are helping that have our back. Representative Jurgens, can you say on what the House is currently working on regarding COVID-19? You know, just in general, our business is continuing. I mean, we're continuing to work. It's just working very differently. As you can see, we're in our home offices right now. Um, yesterday afternoon, of course, you, you know, before we went on the air, we talked about um, the uh, working up at the Capitol yesterday when we had the, the sessions to vote on the workers' comp bill. But yesterday afternoon, I had a committee hearing, an education finance committee hearing, uh, same technology that we're using right now with Zoom, and we have members of the public that testified in the committee. It was, it was informational, but yet it was just like we were sitting around the table at the Capitol in the state office building holding, holding a hearing. So uh, we're continuing to do the business. Uh, we're scheduled to go back on the 14th of April, possibly sooner if there are bills um, that we have agreement from all four leaders uh, that we would come back sooner than, than the 14th. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot will uh, we'll learn a lot more in the next few days of, of the stay-at-home order and, and what that entails. But um, we're working probably as, as, as long of days as we were before. It's just working very differently. Senator Bigham, are there any updates in the Senate focused on COVID-19? Yeah, I mean, we're working differently, too, and in, in having a lot of these types of calls and, and um, just really reaching out to constituents, to businesses, to, um, to Regina Hospital, for example, and just making sure, keeping contact with our long-term care facilities. Um, that's a lot of uh, what I've been doing. Uh, as Representative Jurgen said, we're scheduled back on the 14th. Right now, we are in the middle of a Passover Easter um, holiday break that that starts relatively soon here so the 14th is when uh, we're scheduled to go back but we're working on technical um, bills that um, help government and our local governments uh, function better for example I'm working on allowing online application marriage applications uh, that currently the counties can't do um, because during this unprecedented time we have to think out of the box and look at reviewing those I know there's a big push for renters assistance and homeowners assistance. Um, I'm also working on some flexibility for the counties related to property taxes so that they can continuously send um, the money they receive down to our local partners or schools or cities or townships. So those are the types of things that 
we're continuing to work on in the Senate. Thank you for those updates. Is there any more information you'd like Minnesotans to know? Is really to stay up to date. And we have the website mn.gov backslash COVID-19. And on that, it has information from the Department of Health, from Public Safety Department, from the Department of Employment and Economic Development. Uh, the governor, uh, who has been tremendous throughout this whole thing, has set up a dashboard so that Minnesotans can see in a very transparent manner um, the information that he uses to make the decisions on, on the executive orders and to protect Minnesotans. Um, but, you know, uh, both Representative Jurgens and I are very active on social media, so I encourage folks to, to do that. And, um, you know, most importantly, stay home. You know, stay home and we're going and, and to stay safe and we're in this together and um, look out for each other. Be kind um, and uh, check in on, on your neighbors and, and uh, we will get through this together. Brian, I just want to say we're in, in difficult times now. It's likely that things will get worse before they get better. Uh, we're asked to stay home, limit our contact with each other, adhere to the recommended social distancing guidelines and other safety precautions. Um, much like 9-11 changed us, our lives are forever going to be impacted by this, the deadly reality of the pandemic. But eventually the worst is going to be behind us. We'll return to life. It'll become a new normal. Um, we'll spend time with our families, our friends, our neighbors, we'll go to restaurants, ball games, concerts. Um, our businesses will reopen and people will be allowed to go back to work. We will have brighter days. We'll return to prosperity and we'll get through this together. Thank you guys for the hard work that you're doing, you know, for us Minnesotans during this tough time. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day. You bet, Brian. Thank you, Thank Brian. You.